To understand team building, you first need to understand how to read the character screen. So if you don't, you can check out my previous video explaining everything you need to know about the character screen. Once you understand that, the rest comes pretty easy. Now let us jump straight into the guide by going to the formation screen. This is where you put together your teams. In Revive Witch, a team consists of 6 dolls. 3 are your deployed dolls, meaning that they are the first to enter the battle and the remaining 3 are your backup dolls. A backup doll takes the place of a deployed doll after they are knocked out in combat. So in battle, all 6 of your dolls must die before you get a game over. Now the most important thing in team formation is the actual position where you place your dolls. Let's start in the deployed doll section. The very first position on the left is the back position. This is usually where you would find most DPS units with the idea being that in order to deal as much damage as possible, your DPS should be the last to fall in battle. And the reason they would be the last to fall in battle is because most single target attacks deal damage to the doll in the front first, then the middle, and finally the doll in the back position. Which of course explains the next two positions. Right next to the back position is of course the middle position and it's the only one you should never get mixed up. You will usually find healers or compellers in this position. And finally on the right side of the middle position is the front position. This is usually where your tank is. Here is what this translates to in battle. Now let's quickly go over the backup doll section and exactly how they work. First off, they follow the same principle of the leftmost unit being in the back row and the units farthest to the right being the front row unit. The front row deployed doll can only be replaced by the front row backup doll. This is an important thing to know. So basically, when your tank dies, you more than likely want another tank to take up that position. So your full 6 team setup should look something like this. One tank here, and your backup tank here. One healer here, and your backup healer here. One DPS here, and your backup DPS here. And with that, you have a full team. The last thing I need to teach you about the formation page is the element buff. You can currently see it in the top left corner right above my first unit. If you place three units of the same color in the deployed section, you will get a 10% buff to your attack, defense, and HP. This buff also applies to your backup dolls no matter what color they are. The only rule is that the three deployed dolls must be of the same color. So you can have three brimstone units, three salt stone units, or three mercury units. Or you can have two of the same color and a witch since she counts as all the colors. You cannot gain the buff by having your three backup dolls be the same color. You can only get the 10% buff if your three deployed dolls are of the same color. But there is a way to bump this up to 15%. If all six units, both deployed and backup, are the same color you will get a 15% buff to your stats instead of just a 10%. Now a 10 or 15% bump in stats is nothing to scoff at, but I implore you to always look at your units first as you may be able to build a stronger team by sacrificing that 10 or 15% stat boost. And this is now where we go into unit evaluation. A basic team consists of a DPS, a healer and a tank. The current banner character is sure. So let's say you pulled and got her or you're considering if she would be a good fit for your team and your current roster. The first thing you would look at is her class and as we can see she is a healer. You can also see that she is part of the brimstone fraction. Now let's look at her skills. Just because she is classed as a healer might not necessarily mean that is all she specializes in. So to find out what she does let's look at her skills. Her first skill heals all allies for 300% of her attack and gives them a 10 second shield that absorbs 1 hit of damage. It costs 2 order energy to cast. Her second skill also heals all allies for the same 300% attack but it also increases the allies crit rate by half of Shur's own crit rate. And additionally it can increase the crit damage as well. This skill costs 4 chaos energy to cast. Her passive skill increases the damage all allies can deal and also increases the amount of healing they receive for 10 seconds. So when we look at Shur as a full package we can see that she is a crit boosting healer. So we would want units that can benefit from crit boosts. First let's grab a tank for this team. Since there are no tanks that benefit specifically from crit boosting and for the sake of speed I'm just going to grab Avil. Despite being a low rarity unit, he is a very good tank. His first skill allows him to absorb all damage for all his allies for 5 seconds. 
His second skill deals damage, has a stun which can interrupt enemy skills, and he reduces the enemy's physical defense when they are attacked by anyone on the team. His passive just makes him more bulky so he can tank more damage. With these two units, we now have a crit boosting healer and a defense shredding tank. So our ideal DPS unit should be a crit focused physical attacking unit. Fortunately for us, I know a great Lorizi doll who fits this perfectly, and her name is Nemesai. Her first skill deals 350% to the enemy in the back row, and can be repeated up to 3 times on cast whenever she lands a critical hit. Her second skill marks the enemy in the back row, which increases her crit chance by 40% at max level. And finally, her passive increases her critical damage. So we now have a unit that benefits from having critical chance up and also does physical damage. And with that, we have a starter team that would be able to take us through at least the first 4 chapters of the game and clear practically all content with proper investment. You won't even need backup dolls if you are strong enough. When we are ready to build some backup dolls though, to flesh out this team I will try to add another physical defense running time. In this situation, c -Test is a direct upgrade to Avil, so it would only be sensible to place her as our backup tank. As for our healer, Nor is another brimstone healer, and since we already have 4 other brimstone units, let's just go for the 15% bonus. Our last DPS can be Ellis, who also can raise her own crit rate and deals physical damage so it synergize quite well with all our current team. And there we have it, a full team consisting mostly of low rarity units. So you have very little excuse for what teams you can build. As we are at the end now, let me just throw a few extra tips to help you. Until you clear the first 4 chapters of the story, I would suggest only investing resources into your first 3 dolls, the ones that you will deploy all the time. The reason for this is that resources are scarce when starting out. You will be able to clear the 4 chapters with max level purple gear and the level 1 passive unlocked. Depending on your units, you may have to ascend to AF4 but the stronger units in the game can clear chapter 4 with ascension 3 max level. Once you are in the end game, you can look to start building out your backup dolls, or creating an entirely new team if you so wish. PvP only allows 3 dolls as well, so make sure your main 3 dolls are beefed up. After a certain threshold, PvP will become an auto fest, so don't worry if you struggle in the beginning. Finally, since this video is already feeling quite long, I will make a follow up video showcasing different team compositions. Some I am using, some I am building and some I suggest. I'll also make sure to build a team around the 4 starting UR units, so that everyone will have an idea of where to start. I hope this video helped you. Feedback or suggestions can be left in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next video.